It's the end of the day with Ray. Hello, my friends. Well, if you look on the interactive board, it says Visual Edge Technology Incorporated first quarter 2023 update, a non-performing company we've written about before. It continues to drop in value for the only BDC with exposure. We all know the BDC lender behind Visual Edge Technology is Aries Capital. Ladies and gentlemen, this updated report was published yesterday, April 26, 2023. I'm going to read the updated report, and then I'm going to ask Austin some questions. These questions are pretty tough questions. And the reason I want to ask him these pretty tough questions is maybe he'll start answering some of the easier ones and he kind of work his way up. But I have thought of something. I have thought of something. We know that Austin went on Andy's show shortly after I did the very first episode and basically gaslighted the entire conversation. Maybe after today's episode, which would be the seventh episode, he'll go back on Andy's show, do some more gaslighting. But I'm thinking he could also go on Frank Canada's Fridays with Frank You know, Austin and Frank are about the same age. They grew up together in the same time frame. And, you know, maybe he'll be more comfortable talking to Frank. Frank, if that's the case, reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to send you the questions to ask Austin. He might be more comfortable answering those questions from you, you know. Or maybe you could invite me on. We could have three of us on there. You know, let Frank kind of talk through this. And I can ask Austin questions. Frank could ask Austin questions. I mean, that would be dynamic, wouldn't it? That'll never happen. So I think the next best thing for me to do is I'm just going to go ahead and wear a hat because it seems to me that Austin's pretty comfortable talking to people with a ball cap on. So maybe if I wear a ball cap during today's episode, he'll be a little bit more calmed down and maybe he'll answer some of these questions. So let's jump on the board and see what's going on here. This is the report that was updated April 26, 2023. We last wrote about Visual Edge technology back October 31st, 2022. Then as now, all we have to go on is the information offered by the company's only BDC lender, Aries Capital, ARCC. The public record does not tell us anything about what might be ailing the company. However, there's no doubt that something's wrong, given the second lien loan held by ARCC was placed in non-accrual in the second quarter of 2022 and remains non-performing. Furthermore, since our last report, ARCC has continued to reduce the value of its senior and second lien debt held by 10% and 45% respectively. An equity stake with a cost of $3 million remains valued at zero as it has been for three years. As of quarter one, 2023, the total value of the $124 million advanced at cost is down at $77.9 million, down from $92.4 million when we last wrote. That's a $14.5 million decline. The company remains rated CCR5, but we've increased the estimated realized loss that might occur to a range of 25 to 50 percent at the top range. That implies a possible loss of 62 million versus 46.1 million already booked on an unrealized basis. This is just common sense guess, as neither ARCC nor public record is telling us much. This may reach realization moment. Shortly, given the first lien, debt is already matured and the second lien is non-performing. However, with no direction from ARCC or anyone else, we're not currently assuming anything will happen in 2023. This means there may be more occasional updates ahead. And when those updates come, I'm going to share them with you, ladies and gentlemen, because this is a very, very important story. But I got to ask a question. This is just kind of a broad question to Aries or maybe some other creditors that Visual Edge might have, it will Aries or outside creditors force Visual Edge into bankruptcy. I mean, if Visual Edge has loans with their BD lender in in non-accrual, they're not paying the bills to their main lender, what other loans or what other bills are they not paying? And are those entities going to force Visual Edge into a bankruptcy to get their money, force them to sell off their assets, realizing that if they sold off their assets, most of the money would probably go to Aries Capital. I mean, that's what I'm thinking. And of course, Austin, he could clarify all this all up. All he's got to do is talk about it, but he continues to gaslight the issue. So ladies and gentlemen, let me just ask some questions. I want to start out with this one. With loans and non-accrual, is given the top executive team bonuses actually ethical? I'm just asking this as a question. I'm not saying that any bonuses were given out, but I'm asking, if you got loans and non-accrual, means you can't pay your bills to your main lender, should your executives, your top 17 executives, get any kind of a bonus? So think about that question, and if they do, is it ethical? Here's here's some more, I guess, more insight on the question. Was the top 17 executives annual occurred bonus amount around 1.3 million for 2022? Let me read that again to you, Austin. 
was the top 17 executives annual occurred bonus amount around 1.3 million for 2022 was yours around 320k and did these bonus projections pay out in other words did you pay that out did you pay out the 1.3 million in bonuses in the year 2022 do these people believe they're owed the money because then they would end up being what they would end up being like you're in debt to them right more debt just asking the question what happened with these bonuses that were occurred were they actually paid out and then what are your plans for the 2023 bonuses hopefully the plan is zero bonuses hopefully you got the executives together got rid of some of the executives we've seen as of lately but get rid of the ones that aren't really helping you get the loans on and on accrual get some new people in there that can help you get the get this thing back <laughs> this ship running right because basically right now it appears to be sinking. But I do want to ask you another question when I think about bonuses. If the sales reps are not performing, do they get bonuses? Or do only senior leaders get bonuses during non-performance? So we got a first big question around the bonuses. Okay, 1.3 million occurred for 2022, is that right? Was yours 320? And then were they paid out? How many of these executives are still owed the bonus? Questions probably you should probably answer right I want to go with some more questions and of course you can ignore these questions or do what you did last time go on Andy's show and I called that by the way the greatest gaslighting in the industry's history I do an episode make everybody aware of that October 31st 2022 report from the BDC credit reporter <laughs> what does Austin do a few days later he goes on Andy's show and they talk about absolutely nothing I mean, it was really nutty. I mean, they were talking about stuff that, you know, that Austin was doing like 50 years ago. And that's why I'm thinking he might be more comfortable, you know, going on Fridays with Frank. They're about the same age. They grew up around the same time frame and they could have more comfortable conversation probably. But Austin, here's some questions for you. And I really think you should answer these. Put them in an email if you want. And then I'll just address the answers on the end of the day with Ray. Or you can come on the end of the day with Ray and answer them. Are the employees at Visual Edge being kept in the dark? And I'm saying this because you did send out an email and you told them all that the commentator was misinformed, but I haven't seen any emails about how you explained how I was misinformed. So I think you just kind of threw that out there and hoped it would just pacify everybody. You could gaslight the whole conversation. Is Visual Edge supposed to notify all government agencies they do business with of any changes in their financial condition? You know, sometimes part of big bids, it says if there's a change in the financial condition, of the vendor they need to make the customer aware you got to make us aware if there's a financial condition especially around like it services and stuff i mean could you imagine could you imagine having this really big deal with a company and all of a sudden you're like, like forced into bankruptcy or something well, you know what happens to that customer they would want to kind of know and be able to prepare for that or are we sending out those notifications if we'd have to do that so the first question austin is do you have any of those contracts where you have to do that and if so, have you sent out the information concerning your financial condition that you're in right now? Do you consider it lying to hire new executives and not disclose the facts around the financial condition of the company? This is kind of for all the executives out there. If you hire someone and you're the leader of the company and you got loans and non-accrual with a CCR5 rating and you're hiring an executive to come and work for you, are you being upfront and honest with them about the financial condition of the company? And if you're not, would you consider that a lie or would you consider that just kind of, well, they don't need to know that kind of thing? Just something to think about because, you know, you're going to need some help to come in there and clean that thing up. And I think it'd be better if you're upfront and honest with these people. Just my point of view, but you could answer the question any way you wish. Are you still chairman of the board or has your equity been dissolved by the massive debt? There has to be some kind of trigger thing going on here with Aries. Sooner or later, something's got to happen, right? So what's the plan? Is Aries going to take complete charge of that company? Are they going to put in a whole new board? Are they going to replace you as the CEO and chairman? I mean, what's the real vision? What's the plan for that? Because quite honestly, you know, that might be something that should be happening. And I'm not saying that to be, you know, mean to you, Austin, or not. But at the end of the day, you got loans and non-accrual with a CCR5 rating. You completely gaslighted all the realities around this conversation for over eight weeks now. And maybe it's time that Aries does think about putting somebody in there that can really take that company and clean it all up and take it to the next level. Just some things that we should be thinking about. Here's some more questions. This one's kind of interesting. So I heard a rumor. Anytime I hear a rumor, and because Austin, you know, refuses to really talk about any of this stuff, I just figured I would share the rumor here on the end of the day with Ray, and then Austin could clarify whether this is true or whether this is not true. But I heard it from enough people to believe that the rumor is probably true. I'm just hoping that it really isn't. But anyway, Austin, you could clear it up real quick. 
How much did Visual Edge add to leases for IT work? In other words, the rep would go out there and do a lease on some copy equipment. Were they adding any money to that deal? And sometimes the customers didn't even know that they were adding money to the deal for like IT services. They just thought the whole entire payment was for the print equipment or whatever the equipment was. But we added these other services in there so we could book some IT service re reoccurring revenue. I mean, it sounds like a, just a crazy, crazy concept. And, and hopefully, if that was going on, it's completely ended now. But it would be really nice to get the facts around that. And, you know, that's something that maybe Frank and you could talk about on Fridays with Frank. Who are the largest creditors outside Aries Capital? So, like I said, you know, Aries Capital, they're just the BDC lender. But, you know, $300 million company, you know, you got OEMs. Are you clean with all the OEMs? You know, a lot of times you'll see... When this issue arises with a big giant dealer, when they're having financial issues, they got loans and non-accrual, the CCR5 rating, they might start jumping around from OEM to OEM. And of course, the OEMs they're leaving are probably all excited as long as they're cleaned up. But that would be something interesting. And I'm sure the OEMs all realize that Visual Edge has loans and non-accrual with a CCR5 rating because a lot of them watch the end of the day with Ray, right? Are salespeople demanding all bonuses to be paid as earned, eliminating any future promises of payouts? Because this should happen. I mean, I'm thinking that the really good salespeople, you know, they're going to say, you know, I'm not going to wait six months or a quarter for my bonus. When I sell this stuff, you need to pay me now. Because once they're aware they got loans and non-accrual, the CCR5 rating, they're going to be like, hey, we got to get our money as we earn it. And I don't blame them for doing that. And you could expect that could happen pretty soon there at Visual Edge. Do the executives who caused the apparent financial crisis get to go and participate in the company award trips? If so, why? <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking to myself, you know, are you sending the executives that are part of the executive team on the awards trips when you got loans and non-accrual with a CCR5 rating? And then I would have to follow it up like this. Did you allow the salespeople who were 50% of their quota to go on the trip? I mean, I imagine you got some salespeople that work at Visual Edge that were like 90%, 95%. You might even have some folks that were 98%. 98%, sorry, you can't go. You know the rules, you gotta be 100%. 98%, you don't get to go. And they're like, what the hell? I'm sure the sales rep's thinking, well, you're going, and we got loans and non-accrual with a CZR5 rating. This executive's going, this executive's going, this executive's going, and we're in a financial crisis. How's that fair? I mean, I'm just thinking that's what your salespeople are probably thinking. That's why it's so important that you communicate with your salespeople. So I want to follow it up with this, and I'm going to ask you, Austin, will the waterfall event be a bankruptcy? I'm also asking this of the shareholders, if there's any of those shareholders left. You know, if there's some shareholders, if you got some of these shares out there, folks, you know, maybe some of the owners have sold to Visual Edge, I don't know. I'm hoping you all just took your money and ran. I mean, I hope you don't have any shareholder equity value in this because the shares are probably worth like three or five cents. But uh, reach out to me. Because I, I'd like to talk to y'all if you if you got equity or shares in this company. Because I, I want to explore the thing about the bonuses. You know, and, and you guys would have privy to all of that. Because if you're shareholders, they should be disclosing all the financial information to you, I would think. Right? I mean, you would demand that, right? And so, if you're seeing a bunch of money that's leaving the company above the line, could that not be questioned that that should have been paid as distribution? But in all reality, how could anybody be paying distribution? How could anybody be paying any kind of bonuses if you got loans and non-accrual with a CCR5 rating? So I just think there's a lot of issues here. I'm almost thinking if there's a shareholder out there, because the shares are probably worth like three or five cents, maybe I should buy some. And then I would be a shareholder. And then I would have access to all the information because as a shareholder, I would demand all this information. And of course, once I got all the information, I could make all of you aware of it. I'm just thinking that could be interesting. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to follow this story. I'm going to continue to share my thoughts on this story because this story validates everything I've been telling all of you over the last 10 years. You can't run around and buy declining revenue without the right human capital, without the right processes, and without the right programs to deliver a diversification into those accounts that's profitable. If you do it wrong, it'll be a disaster. If you don't diversify, you're going to just continue to watch your, your business decline because we all know print's declining. Apparently, Visual Edge is in a mess. They got loans and non-accrual with a CCR5 rating. They got a chairman who refuses to talk about it. We got an industry media who refuses to talk about it. We have all the analysts who refuse to talk about it. Thankfully, we got the end of the day with Ray that can help our industry navigate 
through these turbulent times. Just some things to think about, my friends, because we all know this. Status quo is the killer of all it'll be invented. Don't get stuck in status quo, and I'll see you all tomorrow.